The world has changed. America has changed. If something were to happen tomorrow, how self-sufficient would you be? Could you grow your own food? Could you sustain your own livestock? Could you survive? This is the We Grow Our Show with Nick and Don. Nick and Don talk about everything from politics to planting. They cover techniques, methods, and tips on how to not only survive, but thrive. Visit the website at wegrowhours.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Get your grow on. It's time to get your grow on. (laughs) Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. Feeling a little silly today. Uh, I've got an excuse to be immature. We've got a slightly less mature studio guest list. Are you calling me less mature, Nick? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I've missed the last two episodes, actually. Yeah, yeah. When we're in studio, you're like, oh, I got stuff to do. Yeah, it I have happens. to go this, got uh, to do that. Last week, I had some kids. Uh, you had kids last no, week? No, I had some. Like, just randomly, boom, hey, I've got children. We had a baptism. Oh, okay. So, and uh, this week, we've actually got the one that was baptized in studio with us, as well as his brother. All right, Mr. Holy Pants, how are you today? Good. Awesome. <laughs> well, this episode, we've got, we're trying to get to some perspective, um, the kids' view on homesteading. That's kind of our goal here. And and uh, for people out there that are looking to get into raising your own livestock and growing your own food and stuff, and you have kids... This would be a great time to call in with questions because these guys are expert homesteaders. They've been doing it since they could walk, right? Yeah, yeah. So we've got Brandon, my 15-year-old son, and Joshua, my 10-year-old son. They've got some experience in homesteading. They've been doing it oh, for yeah about 10 years now. We've been growing our own food. Um, only about five years have we gotten into the livestock aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But we've been doing gardening and aquaponics and hydroponics and things like that. Since at least Joshua was born. So so let me give the number. It's 602-277-5369. Give us a call and uh, with your questions. Yeah, we actually had some uh, fans submit questions on Facebook, so we can go through those as well. Okay. Uh, but these guys have been, they've been doing it. Um, we homeschool. So part of their homeschooling is actually, we've kind of integrated the farmsteading, homesteading, and uh, maybe even some prepping right into what we do as far as the school curriculum. So they've got to learn how to take care of the animals. They've got to learn how to, if they're going to eat the animals, how to process them, how to grow their food, their vegetables, their fruits, you know, feed the fish, process the fish. You guys kill cute and fluffy animals? They're just smiling. It's the radio, guys. you got to talk. <laughs> that, that was a very TV reaction for a radio show. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, Josh, what about you? Do you Have you uh, helped us process animals? Yeah. Did you like it or hate it? Hate. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's not a fan of doing the processing. He's a fan of eating them, but he, won't, he doesn't like processing them. But he knows how. Yeah, and I, th- I'll be honest with you. I don't like doing it either. For one, it's work, and I'm lazy. Uh, but two, it, you know, it's, it's a sad fact of life that in order for one thing to live, another must die. Um, it's just our job to make sure that that happens quickly and as painlessly as possible. Yeah, we teach how to respect food. Now, Brandon, we were talking on the way over about processing you know, rabbits and that type of thing. And one of the things I had asked you is where food comes from and what most of your school friends, now we homeschool, so as out-of-school friends, huh. think about that. So what did you tell me? I said a lot of the kids I am friends with tend to think that food comes from the grocery store, even though it is meat, and they do not realize that the farmers have to work hard and tirelessly in order to manufacture the meat. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. (laughs) I second that notion. Yeah. So, I mean, it it, it is, you know, in today's world, a lot of people think food comes from the grocery store shelves, from McDonald's and that type of stuff. Now, we try to teach the respect Mm -hmm. portion of it as well. Do you respect your food more now that you've processed it? Yes. Expound on that a little bit. I respect it because it is a life that we have to take in order to eat that bountiful dinner. Hey, there you go. Well, well put. 
bountiful. Who uses words like that? I'm jealous. You're the thor. You're the thorus. You're the thorus. You the thorus. <laughs> English is hard. Yeah. No, it it impresses me. You know, it, it, on that note, uh, my nephew, he's five, and he's like my little shadow. Uh, he's always right around when we're building cages and and uh, feeding animals and whatnot. And, and the other morning, he actually uh, they were getting ready to go to school and. He announces to his mother that he doesn't have to go to school because when he grows up, he's going to be a rabbit farmer. <laughs> and what did his mother say? Oh, we're going to give <laughs> Uncle Nick a call so he can tell you that that's not, uh, that's not how it's going to be. He says, well, I don't use phones. I'm too little. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a smart aleck little kid. I love him. He couldn't join us. He's a little under the weather, but or yeah. I would have brought him in. We were hoping to have them in as well. Yeah. So they're missed. Yep, there are empty chairs in the studio. But uh, no, it's it's pretty cool because you know, the, he probably would never have known at an early age what you know, where food comes from if it wasn't for what we were doing. Yeah, and uh, you know he's he came off the military base you know, a couple of years ago and started living with my with my in laws. And uh, when he first showed up, he was afraid of everything that flew, just bugs and stuff like that he just had he just had this uh fear of all that stuff well, now he's digging earthworms with me and feeding rabbits and helping mm. he's there when we kill him and in fact one day <laughs> a, a rabbit got out and the dog took one out and uh and he he grabs his little hot wheels four-wheeler thing the you know the battery powered car he goes over, picks it up, throws it in the back, kind of drives around with it for a minute. He comes up, and his mom's like, oh, is the bunny sleeping? He goes, no, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was being the rendering truck. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> oh, man. So my, my kids have definitely not grown up being afraid of animals. Um, but I'll tell you what, they, they love to try new foods, too. So it's really helped us along this path. Because when it comes time to eat a rabbit, that's nothing new. They, they don't mind that. In fact, what else have you guys eaten? Some strange foods. What's your favorite strange food, Josh? You can't. You got to actually answer. I really don't know. All right. How about you, Brandon? <laughs> My favorite strange food would have to be candied salmon. Candied salmon? That's not too strange, though. You buy that yeah. at the grocery store. How about yeah. like crickets or bugs or anything? Fried grasshoppers. Fried grasshoppers. There you go. That's weird. Can I say how you cook them? Sure. You take a lot of grasshoppers, you drown them, oh. then you pull their heads off, which oh. then their spine comes out with all their guts. <laughs> oh. Then you wash them off again, put them in tin foil over an open fire with some vegetable oil and salt, wait till they turn bright red, and then you can eat them. They also make excellent bait when they're cooked. Wow. I just threw up a little. <laughs> They're actually really good. <laughs> Make sure to wash the legs down with some soda. Uh, oh, you can pull the big legs, the the ones with the spines on them. You pull those off. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. this is just not going. Away. I, I'll keep raising the rabbit. <laughs> uh, at least, uh, oh. What's your favorite animal to raise, Josh? Chickens. Chickens. Why? They're like little pets. They all companions. You can do. Anything with them, you can pet them, play with them. They're really good animals. Yeah, are they tasty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we mostly raise our chickens for eggs. Oh, okay. So, pretty much our our breakfasts in the morning are eggs. Nice. One of their favorite foods. I like eggs too. <laughs> I uh, don't have enough room in my backyard for chickens, so we uh, we were raising quail for a little while. Um, but uh, when we wanted to start reproducing the quail, I got some roosters, and they were extremely loud because the system I had them in wasn't uh, uh, all compatible. Um, like it, it, well, I'll take that back. They weren't comfortable enough in their setup to be quiet. Right. So they had to voice their opinion, and it didn't help that I had these giant ducks that would come over and like purposely like look in there because as soon as the duck would look in. All the quail, all the all the males would just go crazy, and so the duck was looking for the reaction. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, a lot of fun. Are you raising quail? Yeah, we're still raising some. Um, and the, the males make a neat noise. What does it sound like, Brandon? I would have to say it sounds like an... No, that... <laughs> it's a hard It's a hard really one to hard describe. To say. How about like... when we come back from the break, you let us know how that sounds, all right? All right, I'll have some time to think. All right, when we come back, we'll get the sound from Brandon. Things just got real. The drugstore is closed and the doctor is unavailable. What are you going to do? Stock your medicine cabinet and bug out bag with nature's alternative, essential oils. Visit mylavenderlife.com for all your essential oil needs. What will you do when your stored supplies run out? Are you prepared? Hostel Hair provides equipment and education you need to control your own infinite food supply. We have live food storage systems, rabbits, quail, and other urban livestock for any situation and strategy. Don't be limited by what's on the shelves. Get started with an infinite food source today. Get prepped, stay fed with Hostel Hair. Call 480-331-3761, 480-331-3761, or visit HostelHair.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Hour Show. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show, where everything is awesome. <laughs> We've got Nick and Don in the studio and a couple of uh, mini-me's, right? We've got Brandon and Josh. Uh, you can't see this, but I pointed to both of them and I got it right. So You did. That's, that's, uh, that's saying something, because... I'm really bad with names and even worse with faces, so don't be offended if I don't know who you are. Anyway, call in. We're interviewing these homesteading experts of uh, shorter than five feet. Is this good? No? I think he's a little taller now. Oh, really? He hasn't stood up. Oh, that's true. Well, I'll, I'll measure him later. <laughs> well, under the age of 16. How about that? There you go. That gets them both. Call in 602 277 Five three six nine. Uh, we want to get some questions from you guys on how, basically, what to tell your kids, how to get them interested in homesteading and in uh, prepping and all the stuff that we like to do. So we did have some questions from our Facebook. Uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and ask this. Craig asked, uh, "What's the most important and or favorite prep item to have handy?" Josh, why don't you go first? What's your most favorite prep item? You want to think about it for a minute? I'll come back to you. <laughs> How about you, Brandon? A flashlight. Flashlight doesn't like the dark. I like it. Yeah, why? Well, let's just say the last time I ran in the dark, I tripped over a rabbit cage and skinned my knee. Yeah, he did. (laughs) (laughs) I was bleeding from the wrist down. So do you consider us at home to be preppers or homesteaders? I would say more homesteading. Yeah. And what's prepping mean to you? To me, prepping does mean preparing for the work that is going to come. Which is? Well, who knows? I mean, Yellowstone might erupt soon. There might be a polar shift. This is... He watches a lot of National Geographic, just so everybody knows. A polar shift. Yeah. I mean, if a polar shift happens, all electronics are going to fail, and north will become south, and south will become north. Yeah, that would happen. Wow. How about you, Josh? What's your f- most important prep item or favorite? My favorite still has to, has to be the same as Brandon. A flashlight? Mm-hmm. And Why? First of all, you don't know what's coming to you in the dark sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you can't see. You need to be able to see all your animals, feed them, all that stuff at night. And what does homesteading mean to you? It means having the animals, companions, and sometimes you get to eat. Yeah, you get to eat. <laughs> what's your favorite animal on the homestead? Chickens. Yeah, I asked you that. What about the goats? Don't you like the goats? Yeah. Just yeah? <laughs> well, the goats are as big as he is, so it might uh, pose a threat. Are you scared of the goats? Nope. No. So one of my nephews, uh, Damon, he uh, he's four, and we had just this one goat that uh, he was kind of a uh, kind of aggressive, and he came up and he and he squared off with Damon, stood up on his hind legs, and came down and boom, nailed him, and hit him in the shoulder instead of the head. Luckily, but. Damon was afraid to go outside, so I went and I was like, all right, here you go. And I handed him a big plastic sword. So that goat comes around, you just beat the crap out of him. (laughs) And so David goes out back and, like, does this brave heart charge at the goat. The goat's like, ah, I didn't sign up for this. It's just hauling in the other direction. We've had a goat that was bigger than Josh that did rear up. And what did you do? 
What do you do? I you I grab him by the EO, take him down and and smack him a couple of times. Get him back into the white shape. You hold their head down to the ground, yeah. right? Yeah. There you go. Take the power away. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. with a goat. You grab it by the horn, or if it doesn't have horns, you can grab them by the ear and you hold their head down. And they uh, they kind of learn who's boss, I guess. You don't hurt them. Yeah, you just, as soon as you immobilize an animal, they realize, huh, this guy could eat me. Maybe yeah. I should be nicer to him. And and a goat could hurt a kid, too. Mm-hmm. So you've got to you've be careful with that. So we've got another question from Sarah. What is the hardest thing to do on a homestead? The hardest thing to do on a homestead would be to take the animal's life for food. That's what a about, good answer. What about the chores? Of the chores, I really like them because it is nice to go out every morning and see the animals and see how they're doing. Yeah. Oh, sounds like you just volunteered for early morning chores. He does. He does. I do he, it every morning as it is. Yeah. He wow. gets up in the mornings and sometimes before I do and goes and does them. You and I are cut from different cloths because that alarm clock goes off. I'm like, Ugh, kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Josh? What's the hardest thing to do? Really nothing for me. Nothing? Do you do anything? Yes. <laughs> he gets away with doing a few less chores. Oh, uh, okay. All right, one more. What do you think is the most interesting thing that you've learned so far? Brandon? What my dad calls rabbit math. One plus one equals 64 per year. Nice. Yep. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, that came from Nick. He taught me rabbit math, and I've passed that along. Oh, that's uh, that's my favorite math too. Now, your are they your nephews? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Are they familiar with rabbit math? Uh, do oh. you have them out there raising and doing the chores? And well, I, yeah. As much as here's the deal: my house, I don't have any rabbits, and my in laws, I don't have any rabbits. I have a separate farm where all of that's going on, and so they've come out and helped me build cages and stuff. But they're not there for daily chores. Right. They're so, they're around your in laws a lot, and that's mm-hmm. where you build the cages. That's right. And so. Most of the influence I have over there is teaching them mechanical skills, really. I mean, my nephew, Hunter, he has a high-functioning autism, and the kid can do math already. He, he can tell if I'm, if I'm half a link out from where I should be when I'm cutting cage material. Yeah. It was pretty cool. He, I don't know if he's counting it or if he just sees the measurement in his head already, but if I'm off by over a quarter inch, he'll tell me. Yeah, yeah. So and I double-check, and sure enough, it's off. So I, we've got another question from Sarah. What is, and, and I guess this is, what can a teacher do to make boring stuff fun to learn? Now, this is tough because we're homeschoolers. Mm-hmm. So they get to, they don't do boring stuff. Yeah. So what's the, Brandon, go ahead. I would say what Josh said earlier. All right, Josh, go ahead. Having field trips, making stuff fun, playing games with each other. All that stuff and make doing work when you don't and loaning when you don't know you're loaning actually. So what about something like geology or social studies, which can be boring? What's the best way to learn something? Geography like that? or geology? Geography. <laughs> Sorry. Geology. We're gonna Thank be looking you, at minerals tonight. <laughs> they they would love that, so or are there any boring books that you've read? A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. And how do we make that go faster? No, don't know. <laughs> Brandon, make how about a you? movie. No, just kidding. Yeah, we don't do that. No. So most of their homeschool curriculum is, a lot of it has to do with reading. We make them read a lot. How often do you read, Josh? A lot. Two hours a day. Two hours a day. Is that the same for you right now? Um, I generally read three hours a day. I go and read an extra hour a night on a book of my choice. Now, you're a reader, though. You like reading. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Josh? Weird. Nope. No, nope, he doesn't like reading. <laughs> I'm with you, man. <laughs> Well, now, see, that's a perfect lesson in how you make things that are boring fun. We talk about reading, and the fact that Nick doesn't read now motivates Josh to be nothing like that. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the example of what not to become. Exactly. Now, it, it, Pay actually, attention, kids. You don't want to be like that guy. And we forgot to answer the question that we said we'd answer when we came back. What does a contornic quail sound like? Oh, gosh. So, Brandon, what does it sound like? Well... And sound Nick makes. <laughs> so go ahead, sound Nick. Nick makes. Oh gosh. Uh, here we go. go. On. Cheep, cheep. It's pretty good. Do it All one right. more time. No. Do it one more time. Cheep, cheep. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew up the speakers of everybody. 
<laughs> driving down the car like, what the head- crap was that? <laughs> I hope nobody had headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for wrecking your day. So we've got one more question. What is the future of the farm? Do you think that there, a lot of kids are going to be farming? I think that's kind of the – what happens on the farm in the future? So I'm not sure if that means bringing technology to the farm. Do you think there's going to be a lot of new technologies that come, or do you think it's going to stay the same way it is now, Brandon? I certainly hope it stays the same way because it means that you get your hands on and dirty, allowing you to gain more of a respect. Yeah, there's, so there's you maintain a connection with where your food's coming from. So you don't think robots are going to be doing it? Nope. Nor do I want robots to be doing it. A robot doesn't have the same connections that would be made with the animals as a human. That's good. Well, that's, I think that's the, the difference between the, the big factory farms and the backyards. Homesteading is you know, we don't have all of the fancy technology. We can't buy a $20,000 conveyor system to automatically feed silage or uh, a tracking system for 130 cattle. Uh, so that it can automatically feed. Everything is, everything is uh, labor intensive, um, in that you don't have really any automation systems. Right. I mean, now you we, can automate on a small scale, but and and we've gone through some of the, uh, you know, we'll, we've watched some of the movies and stuff with factory farming on them. So they've, you've seen factory farming, right? You know what it is. Yeah, Brandon. I've seen factory farming. I've seen how odd it can be. For example, there tend to be chickens in cages, two or three per small. One by one foot cage. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, that's one of the reasons we're doing this is so that the animals have a better life. I mean, yeah, they serve a purpose, but we really don't have to, you know, disrespect them and keep them in little cages like that. Yeah. And you know where food comes from? And you've seen the factory farms? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about them? They're just horrible. You, they don't do anything with them, they keep them locked up. Right. They have no freedom, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why we do what we do, is just to to eat a little bit healthier and know where... It's not just knowing where you... I mean, we know our food comes from factory farms. It's how do you combat that? Exactly. So as parents, I don't want them growing up thinking, okay, it's okay to do that as long as we're eating it. I think it's, it's more important to teach them how not to do it. So we're going to com- combat that in the future. Yep. I like that. And, you know, that's... Now's a good spot to put in the plug of Hostile Hair. At Hostile Hair, we have a lot of, we're going to be putting up a lot more videos of um, things you can do in your own backyard. Uh, We have equipment to sell that uh, will help you achieve your homesteading goals and and, uh, your needs in that area. So visit HostileHair.com. Cool. And you do more than just rabbit cages. Oh, yeah. Quail cages, rabbit cages. I'm actually working on a pigeon trap right now, so... You know, the little buggers are eating your stuff back there. You might as well catch them and get their eggs. They call that squab, don't they? Squab. Pigeon? Yeah. Yummy. All right, we'll talk more about this when we come back from the break. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Oh, my gosh, that was awesome. (laughs) We're off the air talking, and Don asked Brandon... So, do you have a favorite Doomsday Preppers episode? Looks him square in the eye and goes, nope. (laughs) But what what about the one we were on? Shakes his head, nope. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for those of you just joining, this is the We Grow Our Show, and we've got a couple of special studio guests in. Uh, We've got Josh and Brandon. And you got the names right again. That's right. I even looked at the right kids. You did. (laughs) It's like two two out of two. I'm good. It's great. Awesome. <laughs> so we're talking about kind of kids and homesteading and prepping and all that, too. I want to get into the more of the prepping stuff, too. Okay. Like, I mean, you know, Brandon, you talked about uh, prepping for the polar shift and electricity. What else do you think could happen? Well, one of the main social things going on right now is zombies. Yeah, you think it's zombies every are... Every shelf. Everywhere. Everywhere. Zombies. Everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> you think zombies are going to come? I do not know. It it is possible. I mean, anything's possible, but... Well, this is the way I see it. Zombies? Okay. Hungry people that haven't prepared are going to be sick. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be desperate. Sounds like a zombie to me. I mean, is it going to be like an undead, you shoot it and it still crawls towards you kind of thing? No, probably not. But 
Well, that, and, and, hungry, diseased people. Yeah, that sounds like a zombie. Yeah, I think so too. Coming out of populated yeah. areas where there's no food. What do you think, Josh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. So we actually, and this is, I know, controversial. We we teach our kids how to shoot. Um, I and I don't do it so. Are they, you kidding me? I don't do it so they That's learn unethical. how to shoot gun, So they learn how to <laughs> go shoot things. Uh, we do it so they learn how not to hurt themselves, which is kind of, a, I think, a different philosophy. But all of them, are you comfortable around guns, Brandon? Yes and no at the same time. Explain it. I am comfortable around guns because they are a valid self-defense system, and they are a way to get food if it is a last resort. I am uncomfortable because they are a weapon that can take a life if it is, a, if it is in the wrong, unresponsible hands. Yeah. yeah. That's a good answer. How about you? Josh? What Brandon said. What Brandon said. <laughs> well, I am comfortable on guns. If there's a gun sitting on the table, what do you do? Leave it alone. Leave it alone, yeah. That's kind of what we teach. I mean, they, you're, you're a pretty good shot, though, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the foundation of it. You start with respect, just like with the growing of our own food. We started because we respect the animals. You know, we want to give them a good life, whatever. Um, but the guns, you know, we... You need to know, just like Brandon said, you need to know that this device is meant to kill stuff. That barrel points at an intended victim. You know, once you have that down, it's like, okay, anything that this barrel is pointing at is meant to be destroyed. Or never, it doesn't get pointed. At. Never point a gun at anything you don't intend to destroy. There you go. A gun is always loaded. See? We need to go through that. Awesome. Part of homeschooling. Part of homeschooling. <laughs> I love it. I suppose it's part of prepping, too. And there's some fun stuff that comes out of prepping. Yeah. I mean, we get to, I don't know. What do you do for prepping that's fun? Well, I've got a bunch of camping gear. i got to mo- go make sure it works. Yeah. You know? I-, I had something else in mind. Uh, Flame throw. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, just this weekend, I actually started making a couple more videos, uh, playing around with a sandblaster, two different sandblasters to deliver a fuel source to an f- open flame. And uh, I kind of wrecked a tote doing it. Uh, Did you burn it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It? Yeah. I thought it was out of the blast range, and it wasn't. Oh, boy. So, yeah, it smells like burning plastic at my shop right now. Well, and where I don't know, but, I mean, it was kind of cool at home. We got to, you know, you've played with rat, played with, but you've used rabbit poop in a lot of experiments. I mean, we got that big barrel sitting in our backyard from him. Remember doing the methane? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Methane digestion? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Did you guys end up lighting it on fire at all? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Open the cap up and push it down and hold a lighter over it. it That's awesome. When I had, I was producing 400 pounds of rabbit crap a day. And so I was producing a shiz ton of methane. And I think that that's an actual term, shiz ton, (laughs) (laughs) because because of the product thereof. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, it was it was shooting about a six foot flame off of the barrel of that just just lighting on fire. So, yeah, you can do a lot of fun fun things with that. Um, so sorry about leaving rotten poop in your backyard. That's but, okay. Uh, we made a homeschool experiment out of it. That works for me. But it's still there. Yeah, yeah. One of them is watch rabbit poop and how it dissipates over time. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of them. And what does it turn into though? It turns into soil. Yeah, it does. It turns into really nice soil, nutrient-rich oh, yeah. soil that we can grow things in. Now, we grow things mostly in aquaponics. You talk about you know, mm-hmm. uh, homesteading. That's part of ours, too. And what do fish do? How do we feed the plants? How's that, Josh? The fish poop. <laughs> <laughs> can I explain a bit better? Yeah. Go ahead. And what, what happens after the fish poop? I don't want to say. <laughs> Go ahead, Brandon. So the fish poop. And then the poop will go into the waters and feed the plants. The plants will then soak up the poop and produce <laughs> and produce their waste. Well, two different bacteria. What are they? Nitrates and nitrites. There you go. Yeah. And those so it's turn anatrophic clean, bacteria. And those in turn feed the fish and clean the water. Exactly. Kind of cool, huh? See what you can do with homesteading? Yeah. I gotta get some kids so I can teach them my evil ways. Yeah, you should do that. <laughs> Just been borrowing my nephews. It's been working pretty good. We got to meet them the other day. Yeah, they're cool kids. Uh, did you see that cake that my grandma made? Speaking of poop, yes, 
Yeah. We'll have to post that on the Facebook page, which is facebook.com backslash we grow ours. Right? Yes. Okay, just making <laughs> sure. Uh, we'll post a picture up there. But my grandma, she thinks very highly of me, and she, uh, she made a cake that was like, I don't know, half a foot to a foot tall, and it was just a giant swirly turd. <laughs> Had like, and then when I first saw, saw, I thought she put an elephant crap on the plate. Yeah, it it was bad, and uh, yeah, she's a she's a funny lady. <laughs> so edible poop. That's uh, that's the topic right now. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's everything to do with poo. That's yeah. right. Did it taste like chocolate? Well, it was chocolate. <laughs> so yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, so I I I've actually. Uh, I like that your kids know what aquaponics is and what actually is happening there. Uh, I think that people don't realize how much kids are learning on a daily basis. Just because you're not telling them something doesn't mean that they're not picking up on what you're doing. Oh, yeah. So um, this is something we were actually talking about in church last week. Uh, What is it that that there seems to be a a, a society decline in work ethic? And I think the answer is less chores at home. There's less work ethic being instilled in our kids at home. So if you're worried about where your kid's going to end up in 10 years, maybe you ought to get some animals right now in a garden and put a hoe in that kid's hands and have them going out there and... What are you laughing at? <laughs> I was thinking otherwise in 10 years they may end up with one in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Put a hole in their hands. When they're younger, they'll become one when they're older. No, that's not what I said. (laughs) I love it. Anyway, no, these would be great. I mean, you could have them start up a little business. Just promote work ethic. You know, that's that's really – I don't have kids, so right now I'm just kind of an armchair uh, observer of of what other people are doing and – Seems like the kids that know what's going on, that actually have good standards and stuff, they're busy. They're doing something. They're not just internet surfing, playing video games, stuff like that. Those things are fine. Those aren't bad things, but they occupy time that could be used towards something productive. And Josh, how would you like to like make money? Make money so you can buy stuff. It'd be fun, right? Mm-hmm. You can't nod your head, you gotta say. Yeah, that's yes. a that's a radio <laughs> nod right there. At least hit the microphone a little bit so you hear the okay. poof, poof. There you go. Perfect. There's the radio nod. So you you want to have some spending money, and you have to work for that, right? Yep. You can't just ask Dad. I know that your dad's cheap. He's not going to just hand you money. Awkward silence. <laughs> I think you just gave him a very nice compliment there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's my plan anyways when i eventually have children is to put them to work yeah do we hand you guys money when we were little kids and couldn't do any work yes now no you got to earn it last time i asked for money you made me clean the dog yard and then i got twenty dollars yeah twenty dollars for cleaning the dog yard yeah we well, should it hadn't been cleaned for a month before so. Ooh. that's because you of, didn't do it that's <laughs> a lot of dookie I, I sat there scraping it up for three hours that's pretty good pay per hour. Yeah. Decent money. So, yeah, we, I think we should, you know, what do you have an opinion on why kids don't seem to want to work anymore? It is because there are so much more video games and the ease of access to waste time in the culture now that kids are wanting to spend more time doing that than to actually work. Yeah. Again, another good answer. So when we come back from the break, we'll discuss a little bit more about things, how to get your kids involved in homesteading and how to get them interested in it. So stay tuned. Woo-hoo. Things just got real. The drugstore is closed and the doctor is unavailable. What are you going to do? Stock your medicine cabinet and bug out bag with nature's alternative, essential oils. Visit mylavenderlife.com for all your essential oil needs. What will you do when your stored supplies run out? Are you prepared? Hostel Hair provides equipment and education you need to control your own infinite food supply. We have live food storage systems, rabbits, quail, and other urban livestock for any situation and strategy. Don't be limited by what's on the shelves. Get started with an infinite food source today. Get prepped. Stay fed with Hostel Hair. Call 480 331 
3761 480-331-3761 or visit hostelhair.com lock and load this is the we grow our show i get pumped up every time i hear that lock and load this is the we grow our show very sneezy episode. Oh With yeah, I've got a mute button dogs. over here. I was just say there's a mute button for that. Well, it's it's called a cough button. I didn't know that it applied for sneezes too. Uh, nice. <laughs> I think so we welcome should, back. Yeah, I think man. we should say it's now with sneezing on. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about what was it? How to get your kids involved. That's right. How, How to, to get, get them motivated. Motivated. So there's probably a lot of folks out there that are on the verge of making that jump into growing their own food. But maybe you're a single mom and you've got three kids that just really like video games, or you know they're just have, you're having a hard time motivating them. Let's say what what gets you off the couch? What would what gets you guys going wanting to go out and mess with the animals and stuff? What's your motivation? How could I sell it to you so that the animals stay alive? Well, because it's in your hands to keep them alive. Okay. So giving you the responsibility yeah. that if they die, that's a problem. That's a good. That's a good take on it. Now we have animals die though. Yeah, animals do die, especially during the summer in Arizona. It gets very tough on them. And do you take that personally? No, I take I take it upon myself to prevent it as much as I can. But death does happen, especially when there's, especially when in the summer when it's a hundred and something degrees out. Yeah, yeah. And we've had little chickens mm-hmm. die too, and that's kind of genetics. Is some of that. How about you, Josh? What motivates you to go out and do things? Same thing as Brandon. Same thing as Brandon. How about YouTube? Gonna, that motivates you a bit, doesn't it? I'm going to start calling him Captain Ditto over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what he said. What he said. <laughs> so, you guys have rabbits out there, and I have a particular interest in rabbits. How do you like the bunnies? Josh? You got to talk. Do you like the uh, rabbits? Yes. Yes? What do you like about them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll we'll drop back to Brandon. Do you like the bunnies? Yes. Why do you like them? I like them because they're fun to look at, and as a ba- as babies, they tend to be very cute. Yes. And as they get older and older, amidst all the poop, <laughs> there is a great food source in there. And of course, like I said earlier, one plus one is sixty four a year. You know, they're a great food source. They're great to look at, and if you raise them right, they can actually be quite nice pets. There you go. Now, in fact, we have. A pet now. Oh, do you? Yes, one of the rabbits became a pet. What's its name? Its name, it, I'll be able to say it on here without being sued. Skittles? Yeah. Yes, I think you it's can a trademark, It's a trademark <laughs> name, though. Like, yeah. where, where are you going with this kid? And that's where... <laughs> <laughs> its name is Skittles, and I guess we've accidentally trained it. It's where anytime we go out to try and feed it, it will knock its food dish out of its cage and poke its head out asking for food. Really? Yeah, I mean, if you train them wrong, they're going to do stuff like that. And it's a very nice pet. She'll actually let you pet her whenever you want. Oh, nice. I actually, when I was raising a lot of rabbits, I had a, about 128 breeding females. And there were a few of them that wouldn't touch their food until I reached in and, and scratched their ears. And so they'd, they'd pound the cage as I walked by and act like they were upset that I wasn't giving them attention. It was really weird. And then there was other rabbits that if I stuck my hand in there, they'd bite it off. They didn't want anything to do with me. But uh, rabbits are funny like that. Yeah, speaking of it, um, when rabbits are actually happy, if you put a rabbit in a cage to breed them and you hear it making random growling type noises, it's not because they're upset. That's actually a sign of happiness. And then another sign of happiness is them literally jumping around and dancing around all over the cage. Nice. That I didn't know about the jumping around bit. I thought that was because they were scared. Nope. It's because they're showing happiness. Oh. That's his experience with it. There you go. What about, like, if they squeal and fall over backwards? <laughs> they just that's got called a hit. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> That's called extreme happiness. Anyway. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> so, um... Speaking of rabbits, if you want to get into rabbits, we've got these awesome cages at HostelHair.com. Come on over. Check it out. <laughs> we, we use your cages. That is true. Yeah. They're pretty easy to keep take care of. 
they are pretty easy to take care of as long as you don't let the poop in them build up over time. Yeah, that's the key is cleaning out once a day. That keeps the smell down as well as uh, eliminate some of the staining that can happen. I would also give everyone a tip. If your rabbits start to have diarrhea, clean it out every hour or else it will not come out. Oh, yeah, if you've got diarrhea, you've got other issues too. Yeah. And that's usually from giving them the wrong food. Yeah? Yeah. What, did you eliminate that problem or what? Uh... Yeah, we eliminated it. We just fed them accidentally too much lettuce. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that'll do it. So we a lot of times we'll take the lettuce left over you know, the, from the garden uh-huh. and split it up between the animals and... We found that if you put too much in there, that they'll they'll get a little sick. Well, and, and rabbits, think of it this way. We can handle a wide variety of, of foods as human beings because we've got larger intestines. We've got a lot of different bacteria and stuff that, we can, that helps us digest that. Rabbits have a very small digestional tract, and you have to prep them for different food. So you have... For example, they have uh, they actually have two large intestines. They have one that produces uh, a high probiotic type. Um, they, they call it a cecotrope. Cecum? Is that- yeah, the cecum is the is like the second is like a double barrel shotgun, if you will. There's two chambers. Um, one is the main path where the hard pellets drop out, and then the other holds the. Um, it's like a squishy poop. Yeah, we talk a lot about poop on here. Yeah, so, I mean, with, <laughs> I'm getting into the rabbit's digestion, and I guess this goes along with doing the home, homeschooling thing. That's why they can eat all of these, you know, hay and... Mm-hmm. and but what, what I was saying, though, is alpha, that's, alpha. that's where it stores all of the, all of the different uh, bacteria that's meant to... If it's not used to something, it doesn't have the bacteria that will help them digest it. And you'll get diarrhea at that point. Right. Because it's like, oh, what do I do with this? Well, just send it on down the chute. And away it goes. Yeah. So glad it wasn't a sickness. It was more of a what you ate kind of deal. What we fed them. Yeah. It's like curry. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, what were you going to say? That was it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now, what, leave, leave it to you to tell us all about the rabbit's digestive tracts. Listen, I've seen them firsthand multiple times, so I know. <laughs> not, not always in working condition, if you know what I mean. So what's the favorite vegetables that we grow? Um, of that of we grow, that would be cauliflower. Cauliflower? How about you, Josh? You got to talk. Mm. Mm. You don't have a favorite out of the garden? Does we it don't ta- grow it. Well, we don't grow my favorite vegetable. What's your favorite vegetable? Broccoli. Broccoli? Yeah, we've only grown... We haven't... Yeah, we did broccoli. We I did broccoli. It. When it completely failed. <laughs> no, we had a real, a couple of good broccoli. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I really don't know. You don't remember that? Nope. Oh. I'm well, a bad memory. We had cauliflower, too. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was that good? Yeah. Does it taste different than what you buy in the store? A lot. Yeah. Is it better or worse? Mm, better. Better? What makes it better? You don't know? Yes. What makes it better is the fact that it is completely fresh and has not been sitting in a freezer for three weeks before putting it on a store shelf. So it's living food. Yes. But does it taste better? Yeah, it does. Why? Because it's fresh. Because it doesn't have. Because it hasn't been sitting there for a while. Because all the flavor ends have been blasted out when it's been frozen, thawed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we grow a lot of cherry tomatoes too. You guys like those? Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't neither. want anything to do with tomatoes unless it's ketchup. <laughs> Amen, brother. How about you? Nope. Nope. It ate my big boy tomatoes. It started growing. Yeah? No, it literally ate it. What did? The cherry tomatoes. Oh, they kind of... Yeah. They, they just overtook half the greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, I've, the only tomato I've ever enjoyed was a cherry tomato, and it was picked right off the vine, and it was so good. I think tomatoes have, like, a shelf life of, like, five minutes. Yeah, well, I go out and pick them off the vine. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't. Uh, ugh, I don't like them. If I, any tomato bought in the store, I've never enjoyed it. We got a lot of peppers out of the aquaponic system too. You remember all the jalapenos? I remember my mouth being on fire. Yeah, you remember the jalapeno poppers Mom made? Yes. Yeah, yeah. those were those good. were so good. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff jalapenos with cream cheese and put them in the oven for a while. Ooh, yeah. They're spicy, yet the cream cheese gets rid of the spice. Interesting. Do you wrap them in bacon, too? 
We haven't, but we will definitely try that now. Yeah, that's my uncle makes jalapeno poppers like that. Wrap it in bacon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ridiculous. Speaking of bacon, Josh, what, what kind of animals do you want to raise that we don't have? Pigs. Pigs? Cows. It, yeah. Why do you want cows? I just want cows. He's been asking for cows forever. He wants cows. Have you seen those uh, those uh, Angus cows that are short? They're only like this tall when they're the, full grown. The mini cows. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. We, we've looked at those. Mom showed you those. The smaller ones. I want one of those. Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. How about you? Brandon? I would have to say of the current animals, I would like to raise geese. 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 Well, you know, muscaves are actually a type of geese. Did you know that, Nick? I thought they were ducks. No, they're actually a type of geese. It makes sense. They've got the same shape. Their necks are a lot longer. Yeah. But uh, if that's the case, then why... Uh, I, I could be totally wrong here, too. I, but I that's think, what I was told, so... Well, I, I didn't mean, I didn't go verify that. The, the Yeah, you just <laughs> threw it out there? I just threw it out there. <laughs> Random fact. I, I took it as fact from the person who told me, because I think they know. Uh, but I could be way, way off. So if anybody knows, just let us know. Yeah, call in. The number here is 602-277-5369 and tell us we're full of crap. Yeah, or go on Facebook.com slash We Grow Ours and make a comment and say that we're full of crap. There you go. We talk enough about crap. What's that? I said preferably the phone. Yeah, <laughs> for so, now. So why do you want to raise geese? I want because they just you can't really explain it other than the fact that I've heard their eggs are very very good, and geese themselves are very territorial and will protect the pond that they are in. Yeah. Speaking oh. of eggs, you mentioned something about chicken eggs on the way over here. What was that? I said that ch- I don't remember. Double yolks. Oh yeah, I said I was talking about double yolks. They're much less common. I mean, less rare than you know. Yeah, we get a lot of them. Really? Double yolks, yeah. yeah. Interesting, because I heard that that was a hormone imbalance that would cause that. Then all, a lot of our chickens have hormone imbalances then. Interesting. But they all taste good. It's it's really different if you, I don't know if you guys have, if you get a chance and you, you go to the store and buy your eggs, one time go to like a local farmer's market and buy some eggs. Spend the whatever they want on them, six, seven dollars a dozen and try them and crack them next to each other on a plate. Mm-hmm. You'll see the difference. Yeah, you know, one yolk is yellow, one yolk is dark orange. Yeah, it is an amazing difference. Interesting. So, well, guys, I think we're running out of time, right, Nick? I think that music says we're just about yeah. out of time. So thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Josh. No problem. Well, to learn MP, more. No problem. Yeah, <laughs> Captain Ditto over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, visit us, wegrowars.com. Check out hostilehair.com. And we're on facebook.com backslash wegrowars. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll catch you next week. And Twitter.com. Oh, Twitter.com what? At WeGrowOurs. There you go. We'll catch Woo-hoo. you the next time. Woo-hoo. Ditto. <laughs>